Hello there, YouTubers. If you are thinking about getting a Hickok Model 539C, I already have one. I'm going to do a little uh, exhibit on how to test the 6D J8 tube. This test will be for shorts and gas tests and emissions and so forth. Okay, uh, first thing you got to do is uh, make sure when you find your 6D uh, J8 chart, Make sure you got everything set as the chart says, and there's a few things that the chart doesn't cover, such as make sure your bias range is on 10 volts, make sure your bias, your, your toggle switch here is on bias volts. Oh, make sure you're on normal down here on the Keth Act, uh, which is a life test situation. And as the chart uh, says, put this on C, which is your function switch. Now we're going to change this for the gas test later, and you'll see that in a minute. Okay. Let your machine heat up to this machine is nice and toasty. It's been on now for about 10 minutes. And the first thing we're going to do is uh, locate our tube, uh, 60J8. Okay. Uh, everything is uh, is set and ready to go. We're going to plug our tube in. Dustly, and this tube's going to be heating up. Now you don't have to wait. For this tube to get hot to do a shorts test. Now, if you notice these cables here, I'll show you. I run to this uh, shortwave radio. It doesn't have to be a shortwave. It can be any radio with an antenna. And you short, you click the uh, red lead onto the antenna, and click the black one onto the negative part of the battery chamber, or any ground onto the, the the chassis, the radio itself. And that is how you do a noise test. Now, it's imperative to do these noise tests, testing these guitar amp tubes because they're noisy. It can cause problems. I say so. Now we to test for noise and shorts. We're going to uh, make the switch run through five through one and tap the tube at each station. There's five. Give it a tap. Listen for noise or see short lights. There's four. That's good. There's three. I heard just a little bit of pop in there, but nothing to declare uh, problems. Now I give my tap on the way back up. Okay, now that little blip of light you see <clears throat> coming off one number to another, that's a capacitor discharging. That's normal, not to worry about it. Okay, but if the light stays on, of course, then we got a short and we got a problem. Now you've done the uh, shorts test and the tube is checked out. It's clear of shorts on that cathode, which are on cathode one now, because this is a double cathode tube. We've got to check both of them. Now that you've done that, you uh, press uh, four, and I go straight for the lock. This tube is maxed out. Well, I see we got to set our we got to set our uh, BIOS grid meter to 3.0. I believe is on this one. I see 3.0. Now you're going to be checking these and resetting them. And here's our 110 test. We have got to keep that directly dead on the line of 110. Now, because what happens is you got things in your house is in the same power circuit. Uh, when a when a um, an air, uh, air condition or refrigerator or a washing machine kicks on or a motor starts turning somewhere in your house, it actually changes the the votes and, and your uh, wall outlets minutely. So you have this is why these are separate. So you can continuously keep checking these during the test. Now as you can see over here the needle has gone to about twelve hundred and uh twelve hundred and seven fifty, twelve thousand seven fifty, which is a showing a very nice test on a sixty J eight. All right, so we can uh, we can take that off now. And normally, I would let this sit for about five minutes and let this tube get as hot as it is going to get, because this normally will uh, creep. This normally will creep up uh, or drop back down and settle into your reading. And when it does that, that's when you take your uh, pen and you uh, you write down your your measurement, your test, uh, whatever whatever that may be, so you can remember. And this is trial one. So we can uh, hit the uh, P4 unlock to unlock the machine. <laughs> now here's the uh, the scary part. To test this tube for gas, you have to swing this from 10 volts to 50 volts. And you have to take the uh, function switch from C to D. So uh, you put your function on D and you swing that over to 50 volts. And like I said, it's a little scary. And then you hold down the gas one, and you're going to turn the bias volts until this until this sweep comes to 500. So you hold down gas one, and you turn the volts until that needle 
gets right on your 5,000, I mean your 500, excuse me, right there. Now it's over 500. Now what you do is you press gas 2, which is the, the P6 button, and you watch the movement of that needle. Now I just push it and you see it just deflected less than 1%. Uh, less than a one uh, uh, metered mark on that meter, which is a good gas test. You don't want to hold that too long because that's a lot of pressure on the tube. Then we take that off of the 50 volt, go back to 10. Don't forget to put your function switch back on C, which is where you test for these tubes. Now you reset your, uh, your bias volts back to where it was, which is going to be 3.0, exactly. Check your test on your, uh, your line test. Make sure you're at uh, 110 there, and go ahead and give it another check. Make sure you didn't blow the thing out with that test, because uh, uh, you, you're, you're actually what you're doing is, is you're heating up that tube uh, with so much votes, the gases that are in that tube are, that are not supposed to be in there, but if they're in there, those gases become conductive, and that's how the electricity travels through those contacts, is through the gases itself. So as you can see, the tube is still testing out, and uh, so we're, we're no worse for the wearing. So the tube has been tested for shards, noise test, and gas. And of course the, uh, the power output of the tube itself, what you see is uh, still about the same. And again, you might want to let that tube heat up till you get a good reading when it settles in. Wherever it settles, that's going to be your reading. Now you, you unlock the machine and you go, you set your 60J to the other trial, which is going to be trial 2. And you would change these uh, settings uh, to what that recommends. And uh, you would do the uh, short test again, uh, do the uh, emissions test again, and then uh, the, the test life. Now, there's something we're going to cover here. When you're testing uh, the tube and you've got it locked down in P4, your needle, when, it's, when it uh, levels out and quits moving, you're going to throw this switch here, which is the, uh, the, the uh, catch ACT test. Now, when you throw this, it basically takes 15% of the energy off of the tube. And if the tube has a lot of life step in it, it's really not going to deflect your, uh, your needle up here very much. Now, they say 15% is acceptable, but I've never seen one go that far down. Now, you can see that tube is starting to drop just minutely, maybe one measurement. Now, there's two measurements. Now, there's three measurements three and a half measurements and it's settled out right there. So when it settles out, you know that uh, you, you just had it drop three and a half, which is very, very acceptable. Throw that switch back and you'll see this needle start to slowly come back up because it's slowly going uh, back up to the proper voltage that uh, the tube called for for the test. And uh, once you've switched over to the other trial, did everything on, on that side, then you got a nice match, providing you don't have any shorts, uh, gas leaks, or any problems like that. You got a nice, good, clean tube ready for sale. Okay guys, hope you enjoyed this uh, video. I'm going to get it on YouTube and I uh, hope you like it.